G'day, my name is John Barry. Welcome to another video tutorial on my YouTube page. Thanks for watching. If you do like what I've been putting out there, I'd really like to hear from you in the comments. And if you've got any other things that you want me to maybe touch on, then again, put them in the comments. Uh, it'd be great to have a little conversation with you. So in this tutorial today, I wanted to talk about the beta programs and how that works in the Adobe ecosystem. So if you look at the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app, where you can see all the apps, and then I go down to the bottom here, we've got um, beta apps. Now these beta apps mean that you can be installing uh, versions of public beta for a lot of the different apps that are here, especially the video ones. It's quite a lot of video ones in here. Premiere Pro is the one that I'm gonna look at right now. There is a way to go and look at other versions. So if for whatever reason you've started to um, go through and use a new beta and it's a little bit wonky on your system, it's beta, you can go back and you can install previous versions of the beta to get something that's a little bit more stable. So a couple of things I wanted to point out while we are working with the beta is that it's going to add extra tax to the system and there are going to be pop-ups that show up when you're starting to use it. They're called asserts. Um, there's another couple things that might pop up, but you can kind of tell them to just ignore for now. Now in this tutorial, what we're gonna do is look at using the beta app functionality for scene detection inside of Premiere Beta. As of today, it is August, early August, 2020. And then I'm going to use what it does when it finds all those cuts and basically cuts the timeline. And then I'm going to copy and paste that back into Premiere 2020. All right, let's bring up the different apps. So what I've got here is the beta version of Premiere Pro. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that we can tell the difference between the two by changing the appearance of the beta version. If you look at the icon for the beta version, it's actually kind of white, right? It's down here, it's this white app. So what I wanna do is make this look super white. All right, let's get into a project here that I've already started, so now I can see the preferences. And what I wanna do is make the brightness as bright as possible. Notice this is not responding, a little bit laggy, bit meh, okay? I'm just gonna persevere with it. Okay, here we go. Now I've got that lighter. Uh, the other thing I wanted to change as well has got to do with the GPU, what GPU is being used at the moment. Oh, it did one of those pop-up asserts. <laughs> Let me just go into project settings, change this over to, in this case, I'm gonna change to OpenCL. You might not really have that option if you're on a Mac. I'm on Windows, so I do have the two options. But you know what, for safety, let's put it on software only. Okay, now there was a little assert that popped up just a second ago. So I wanna bring that up and here it is there. It's a debug event. This is what I was talking about when you start working with the beta versions of the apps. They tend to not necessarily allow you to do things without giving some kind of a warning, trigger that something's happened. In this case, I'm just gonna disable the asserts while we're using it. And that is all that I'm really focusing on at the moment. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna leave, um, Premiere Pro Beta there for a second and flip over to Premiere 2020. Now you can see I've got these projects that I've prepared earlier while I was teaching myself how to go about how to show you guys how this works. And let's have a look at the clip that I've got. Okay, so this is a finished clip. You can see there's quite a lot of cuts running through it. And I really need to be able to go in and, and separate some of these cuts. Now we might be using that in order to do a cut down for social media. In this case, it's a corporate event. So we might be really wanting to put down something that's pretty small into say Twitter as part of a GIF, and then that can go out and be uh, used as 
part of the um, attention grabbing before we hit the link and go to the full video. But for me to actually go in and start to cut that, um, you can imagine how long that's going to take. So let me just clean this up. We can see the original clip is sitting in here. And if I was to go through and let's see how quick I might be on hitting the trigger for it to stop. Whoop, there, right. And I'm going to go back, stop. And then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, one, two, three, four. There's the first cut. Okay, this is the process we would have to do. And maybe we're going fast forward, stop, back, stop, back, 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 forward, forward, and do this over and over and over again through the entire clip. That's going to take a long time. Now, I don't want to spend the time doing this. So what I'm going to do is repair these clips. Now I'm going to hold the control key and click and drag to select or marquee select the edit points. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to join through those edits. Now I have one continuous shot. That's all that I really need. Now let's go back over to Premiere Beta. This has already done the analysis for me. Okay. So I'm going to use this like a good cooking show to show you how, um, how we can go about utilizing it. Now, the thing is, um, I've got that is a scene that I don't want either. There we go. Now, what I did here, and you can do, is copy from 2020 and then go back over to the beta, then right-click and paste. And notice it gives me now the sequence with the clip, because I already had the clip in there in a previous uh, version of this, and it's the same setup, right? All pretty good. I'm just going to mute that audio. So now what we do is in the beta version, we select the clip in a timeline, right click, scene edit detection, and then it's going to give us the settings and the parameters of how we're going to go about using this. You can change the threshold. I'm going to leave it at low sensitivity for this. I don't need it to cut the audio as well. I'm happy to just get the cuts on the vision. Um, and create clip markers at each detect point. No, nah. I don't want to do that in this case. But what you could do is utilize that so then you can just jump through to the next marker when you've got the clip in the source, and then that gives you the option to, well, kind of embed that into the clip, no matter where the clip goes from here on out, which is kind of cool. In this case, I'm going to apply the cut at each detected point, which will cut up the timeline. I hit OK. Now, I can see here that it's about a one minute and four seconds edit. It actually doesn't take that long. It's a little bit quicker than real time. At least on my machine, it is a laptop based machine. It does have some pretty good grunt. I think it's an eighth gen i7 Pro uh, Intel chip. I got a two gig VRAM GPU, which ain't super great. 32 gig of RAM and a pretty fast um, SSD. I'm just going to cancel this here because I know that it's going to work because I've done it before. And this is, the, this is the end result, right? So that's it down there. I can use my down keys to jump into each edit, go back one frame, okay? Next, back one frame. Okay, so that actually detected a cut when actually it's not a cut. It's a cut with the majority of the content that's there, but it's not a cut that I want. But it's pretty cool that it actually caught the cut in there. Right, that's the cut that I want. Back one. Okay, so I'm going to repair this. Right click on the actual um, cut itself, join through that cut. Now, there it's done a cut as well. Okay, so that's actually part of a longer shot. Repair. I might just mute that audio as well. All right. So it's actually picked up all of these cuts, really, and, and some others that are probably, thankfully, on the low sensitivity, um, not grabbing a heap of others. All right. Now we're going to select all, copy, jump back over to Premiere 2020. Uh, let's see. Let's pop this up here. 
and then we'll paste it inside of there. Now I'm just going to also highlight that if you want to be pasting, you want to make sure you know what your active tracks are. So now that V2 is the only active track and the first active track in audio is A2, I know when I paste it, it's going to start at the playhead position and land the paste on the tracks that are now active. Okay, bang, there we go. So this is super, super useful. Now, I mentioned before that if you had used the markers, then you could do something with the markers that means you can load it up in the source monitor and then you can just jump through no matter where the clip goes. Pretty useful. Um, I will actually go back to the original one and we'll run that scene detect with creating the clip markers. And we'll let that run in the background. Now, while that's happening in the background, I wanted to show you this. I'm actually going to clean that up and that up there. And let's see, I might even pull that down and this one up. Or you know what else I could have done? I could have left that as such. Right clicked over this side of where the track names are, delete tracks, and collectively deleted all of the empty tracks. I've created a keyboard shortcut for that. So if I hold Control Backspace, bang, it's just done it for me and cleared all the empty tracks. How did I do that? Well, I went into the keyboard shortcuts and that's under the edit section of the Windows version, but on the Mac, it's underneath the name of the product. So under Premiere Pro, you will see around preferences that the other option is to go to the keyboard shortcuts. So what I wanted to do here is look for delete track, delete empty tracks, and then I created a keyboard shortcut, control and backspace. That saves me heaps of time. Okay, I've waffled on. Now let's have a look at whether or not these markers have come through into Premiere Pro. Lo and behold, because we're working with the same clip, that metadata is actually going inside the clip. So if I was to just open this clip by itself, in any other program, it will have these markers in here. And I'll use the keyboard shortcuts to just jump through. And we remember that that was actually not one. So that's all right. So we'll go into there, we'll just double click on it. And that's the market segmentation marker. Very cool. Uh, delete it. And now that's cleaned. Now, if I was to open that up inside of After Effects or I was to hand that file off to someone else, they get the benefit of all of those markers going in, which means we don't need to even copy paste. Two different ways. I hope you understand the way that this works. So I hope you learned a few things. My name's John Barry. Thanks for joining me. Ciao for now.